Good morning and welcome back to another Irish Health Hour Chats. This morning I have the pleasure of introducing and interviewing Joe Dalton, who is a business consultant, an international executive coach, an inspirational speaker, a world-class sales and marketing expert, and a radio show host. Joe, you're welcome. Thank you, Dolores. It's, I'm delighted to be on uh, your show and share, hopefully, hopefully share some wisdom uh, with your audience. And do you know the one thing I always find funny when people are reading out my bio, I kind of go, I'd like to meet that guy. Yeah. <laughs> Is that me? Is that really yes. me? Yes, yes. But uh, yes, I have a, a checkered past of full of entrepreneurial adventures right across the whole world in many different industries and yes i'm have i've had awakening as well and um i want to want to share that with the world so that's my new adventure my new and that's adventure. fantastic and i suppose that's what i'd love to uh, kick off the conversation with is about in relation to your conscious business academy so i love this this conversation is right up my alley as a business clarity coach myself who goes very deep with people so i love the work you do and i'm delighted to share so you know, you have this, these workshops called Change Your Mind, Change Your Life. I'm going to read out here what you say. You know, life is short and sometimes we get lost in the seriousness of it. And wow, do we. I agree there. And don't you love having fun and a bit of laughter with like-minded people? And this bit, change starts by changing how we see ourselves. And by doing so, others around us change also. Joe, can you let us know, you know, what the background is that you got into from the bio I read out? You know, how did you go from being, and you still are, I know, this consciousness, this waking up and integrating it into the work that you do now, which is absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, it's a great question. I, you know, let me, let me just reckon my twenties, I was probably, you know, earning, I had my own company. I was an agent. I lived abroad. We were living in the billionaires boys club. You know, we had the Rolex watches, the fast cars, the high party and out socializing heavily on the weekends and at that time I was an atheist didn't believe in anything just believed in material goods um, then in my 30s yeah, I came back to Ireland and sort of questioned you know, something came into my mind going I wonder is there something out there is there something out there I went on a journey and in that journey I, I look back now and I read stuff that I read in my thirties and go, oh my God, I remember reading that and going, wow. And now I'm reading it and going, God, there's so much more than this. So it was that journey and, and moving along. And then probably in my early forties, I had another epiphany kind of going, okay, okay. The universe, the world, the people around us, you know, serendipity and sort of just followed what was going. And then, a couple of years ago, had a financial ruin, um, put money into one of my companies and didn't work out. Uh, then I had the debt of a loved one and that sort of rocked me. And from there, I, it was all, I realized it was all external stuff that I was looking at. And I went in inside and I realized that none of that mattered. None of it really mattered. And in my search, I found that everyone suffers from doubt and it all triggers from doubt within our mind. And then from that doubt turns into fear. And then that fear turns into anxiety with a lot of people. And what about, and I used to have this mantra growing up all the time going, life has to be easy. Life has to be easy. I just kept saying this. And I said, this is life has to be easy. So now I've turned my life where, so you know, we know that there's 80,000 thoughts go through our heads and 60,000 of them, most people are negative. Um, the two major influences in our lives are positive thoughts and negative thoughts. And I've switched it now that I have more positive thoughts on a daily basis than negative thoughts. I'm happy all the time. If I get something sticking into my mind, it, I look at it and go, okay, I've asked for that experience and I throw it out and I don't worry anymore. And I, if I could do it, so can everyone else do it. And all they have to do is have trust, not trust in divine or trust in, trust in themselves and follow their own process to make it happen. 
Wow, I love that. So many gems of wisdom there. You know, one thing I want to go back to is the way you said you said to yourself, life has to be easy. So was this something that you said to yourself from a young age or did this like evolve as you were going through, you know, your journeys in your 20s, as you say, when you were more in, interested in material goods, which is quite normal. And then, you know, the journey towards the 30s when I suppose we're gaining a little bit more wisdom from our journey. But did you always say life has to be easy? Yeah, I did. You know, I'm dyslexic. Um, so I was a person in school who would get up and have strong debates with the teachers, but when it came to the academic part, it was, you know, difficult. Um, and I think at that stage, I used to kind of go, life has to be easy, life has to be easy. And I knew because there was, you know, people out there that life was easy. Um, I knew then at, at that age as well that my voice was my power and, you know, mm. talking to people, working people. I, I tell a story that I was in college doing uh, a computer programming course. Um, it was computer pro programming, going back to DOS, if, if you can recall DOS, it was the very early days. Yes. And typing away and the, the lecture coming up and going, isn't that amazing? You type in the reg and a person's name comes up and he goes, isn't this exciting? And you do more, you get more names and more. And I went, you mean if I type all this, I get all this information in? He goes, yeah. I went, no, no, it wasn't for me. So without realizing then, I was picking what my values were and what, I, what career I wanted to go into because subconsciously I was going, I don't have to do this because this is not you. You will go mad doing this. And I knew then I want to get it into sales and marketing. So yes, I always was probably just in the back of my mind, life has to be easy, life has to be easy. And that could have been picked up from a small child and my parents, you know, seven kids, father working, and my mother might have been gone. Things have to, you know, finances have to be better or something. And so I might have flipped it and turned it in that life has to be easy, and which it is. Well, you sure did. And, you know, I think that that is huge because not everybody starts off with that belief and with that positive self-talk. Because as we know, our self-talk, like when we tell ourselves we're not good enough, we're the, you know, it's so different because we're telling ourselves. It's, it's like the record that keeps playing until we actually change that false limiting belief that keeps us stuck. So, I mean, I think it's, it's, it's phenomenal that you had that. And I suppose there are a lot of people that go now to your Conscious Business Academy that don't have those from a very young age that would have, and I know it's all about perception too. I mean, I often say when I talk to that you could, you could speak to four siblings and each of them will have a different perception of their upbringing. They might even have different um, beliefs about money because they'll, they'll just, because of our, ourselves and the way we're made up, we'll just perceive things in, in, in a different way. And I think that you, you most certainly from a young age seem to have taken the positive out of everything, you know, and the fact that you're dyslexic. I mean, I've heard so many stories recently of people that are dyslexic that have gone on to do phenomenal things. You know, it's looking at these, you know, which other people may perceive as a challenge, but just having that positiveness to go forward I, with it. I hid it till I was probably in my 30s. Wow. You know, I, <clears throat> I believed up to the age of 30 that everybody could spell every word under the sun and if you were dyslexic you can't I still can't I, I cannot spell and that so what I don't care I but I believed everybody <clears throat> could spell every word and it was and it was only then I had that realization um and it was my even my confidence and I it was it was starting to be to come the real person and still our journeys if you look at where you are now in your life and you go my god what have we learned over the last 10 years and in the next 10 years you look back and you go wow what have i learned over the last the next 10 years and it's about uniqueness we we talk about clarity and we talk about people being very clear but i and i help companies with their sales and their marketing as well for other business but I'm starting to realize it's not about sales and marketing. These are part of the tools, the, the um, tactical. It's about getting them to be the true selves, the person they are, that imposter syndrome, that who, I, who I, I, I am being who I think you want me to be. Um. And when you bypass 
and get past all that, there is such an awakening. It's like I say to my clients, 25% of people out there will love you. 25% of people out there will sit in the fence and sort of they're going back to me. There's 50% of people out there that would wish you were dead. Think you're the biggest ass in the world. You're not looking to connect with those 50%. You're only really looking to connect with 25%. So be yourself because those people will resonate to you as you will resonate to them. Absolutely. It's like finding our ideal client like that. And that's something I would say to people as well is you can't be selling to everybody, nor do we really want to, because if someone doesn't resonate with the way you teach even, you know, they'll resonate obviously with somebody else. But I think that's, you know, a lot of the stuff you talked about, um, it's developing trust, I suppose. People trust you if they resonate with you, they resonate with your, and you said the power of voice is power. If people resonate with your voice, even your voice through social media, through your marketing, I think that's where really the power comes from even both finding your ideal client and then resonating with them. Congruency right across everything. That's yes. it. Yeah. And, it, it's when, and then getting into the deeper level, when, when you sort of realize who you are, there is a connection with yourself. And I'm starting even now in, you know, in the last couple of months, I'm starting to not, like even before this interview or when I'm meeting people, I'm actually now starting to focus from a heart center mm. than a head center. Because when we're, we're projecting and we're talking, we're, we're working from here. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm going, okay, if I'm going into this meeting, let me focus my energy on my heart. And by focusing my energy on my heart, I'm softer in my, in my speech and I feel that I'm more honest, more connected and genuine instead of that ego out here. Ah, this is me and I'm wonderful and brilliant and I'm great. That it, It's more like, you know, let's, let's be honest here because truth is truth. Truth is truth. And I love that. And I think people can feel that though as well from people, you know, when they are coming from a more heart centered place than a headspace, as you say, which is more ego and I, you know, the heart, I suppose, being the center of the chakra system, I do a lot of sh chakra work, you know, it's, it's, it's the place where we really do um, go deep. And also our heart will stop us, I think, if our heart isn't in what we're doing, is the way I, another way I always look at it, it'll stop us in our tracks. And if we know that there's not, there's just not this congruency between what we're doing and what we feel, our heart center is the one that'll stop us. And by coming into a conversation from a heart place, I think we get, people will feel that connection. So I suppose, you know, your, your workshops then that you bring around uh, sound phenomenal. And I think they are because they're different, in my opinion. They're bringing yeah, they're this wacky. consciousness. And it's like, I love that, that you're aligning um, even the people that you have talking. You know, I mean, I know Denise. I've met, I haven't ever, I have met her. But, you know, and not just Denise. I'm, you know, it's just the people that I suppose you're surrounding yourself with is wonderful and all of you are coming from the same space, which is great. Would you like to tell us a little bit about your workshops that you're doing and how yeah. they're gathering momentum for they're, you? They're, it, it's funny. It's because you talk about inspired action, you know, and mm. inspired action kicks in. And usually then if you don't act on it, the, the mind goes, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. And you go, okay, I won't do it. But inspired action. And I woke up, I had this idea about, running an event didn't know what it was i just had this idea of running an event where people who were on a journey and wanted to meet like-minded people and in a safe environment were able to tell their stories and the way that the, the whole world is going this it's, it's what we call it who will i ask and i woke up at three o'clock in the morning and i got change your mind change your life and i went right and i wrote it down and i said that's a bit silly name it's what i got at three o'clock in the morning came to me We'll see how it runs. So I put it down. And the first one, we had a couple of speakers come in and we were testing it. And we we got about 30 people in. And it was great. 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 And you know yourself, if you're doing an event, it's a hard slog to do an, to fill an event. Anyone that does events, because we all know that they are there. Let me just, that's popping up there. Um, and then we rolled it out. Then we did a second one. And we, the first, we learned from the first one. And then we did a second one and we did a party in, in the morning. 
So the, the first one, we basically shook the negativity out of everybody. People, we kept it quiet and we sort of keep it quiet at each one what we're doing, but people saw it, you know, Chinese whispers. Yes. That we, we take it this way, the people that went, and you can find testimonials, couldn't believe, were not expecting what they got, was different from any other events that they have ever attended and were mind blown. So the first hour, two hours, we get everyone interacting um you know it's 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 party it's really a party it's a party for people like and even we did the hokey cokey last at the last one right and even myself we were outside and we were all holding hands and as you go on the hokey cokey i was even going oh for god's sake yeah. right <laughs> right and then back out again and laughing and everybody was laughing and everyone had a great crack and then we did other stuff and then in that we talked about positivity and negativity and then the speakers come on and the speakers talk. They all tell, talk the same story, but all in their own words and their own experience. So I might get one thing. You might get it from someone else. Sure. But the main thing from it all is understanding that if you really, really focus and train your mind to think positive and focus on the good things, these things can happen. Energy goes where energy flows. So we get to speak and then I will come on at the end and I will do a talk and then I'll also do, it's a talk and a workshop as well. Get the mind going and getting people to, to have that ha-ha moment. And it's only on from half nine to half two. But what's happening? The people that are going to these, they're wanting to connect in a network of other like-minded people who believe in this. So it's still where a networking meeting you'll go to and it's all business, business, business. This is a networking meeting where it's business, but it's also you're touch connecting with like-minded people who understand what your a point of view is and what your values are and you're connecting with them as well. Yeah, I love it. And I love the fact that even the, the feeling of, of the silliness feeling when we're doing these things, because I think that's Childlike. great because it's great because we don't do that often enough, as you say yourself, you know, I mean, I love Zumba. Zumba is a way for me to, and I wasn't a born dancer, but I just zone out when I go into the space with music. I love dancing. I love dancing. You yeah. will see me dance at, at, at a, an event. I can dance. I can dance. But, it, you know, the, the, the beauty of it as well is that it's, it's, I always used to say as well that, you know, where life is meant to be easy, but I always used to kind of, life, work should be fun. Why do we, you know, all laugh and joke and, you know, outside work? But when we go into work, we suddenly put on this mask and, mm. you know, there's people who meditate and, uh, you know, they have this, you know, believing in, in, in their own life. But when they turn the key in the job, they leave all that behind. Why not make work fun? You know, why, we're, we're trying, like, why does everything have to be so serious? Because it's not meant to be. I suppose sometimes it can be like the, I, I know, I suppose from dealing with my own clients too, it's the fear of, um, it's great to, you know, it's the fear of what other people will think of us. And, you know, you mentioned there about fitting in. I do a lot of work of belonging as well. I think we a lot of us spend a lot of time trying to fit in rather than feeling that feeling of belonging to where we are, even whether it's the job, just, you know, feeling that we are who we are with our meditative, medita can't say that word, meditation practice or whatever. And, you know, we belong in our body doing that, but then we try to fit in maybe when we go to work. Yeah, and it, 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 so what I'm trying to achieve is, I'm not trying to make people change. I'm not trying to force people to change. I'm trying to show people that there's other people out there are living a life of joy, happiness, and love. And by doing what we are doing for ourselves, we might get someone then to change their thoughts or go on their own journey. So it's not showing, it's, it's, it's doing. So then other people might go, I noticed that person is different. Hmm. I wonder what they're doing. I might go and see if I can change myself as well. Fantastic. So it's that doubt, fear, anxiety you spoke about as well, you know, doubting maybe that we can do it but then maybe seeing that other people that we might know, we might follow them on social media, or we might know them personally, 
you know, we're seeing the changes. You say, you know, we're seeing that they're, they have the ability to have fun. Maybe yeah. we're wondering what it is about ourselves that we can't. We might notice the fear um, and the anxiety maybe coming up when we, when we try to even have that bit of fun. And I think it's really looking at that. So I suppose if, though, if people that are a little bit skeptical maybe of, of, of any of this went along to a workshop, I love people that are skeptical coming along to anything I do because I think it's great because it's coming with an open mind then. It's, yeah, it's not like we've all, I've gone to events and I go, oh, here we go. I'm going to these events and I've come out and gone, that was great and it was brilliant. And I kind of went, you know, people get, let's, I'm trying to get something, people to get more from an event. So we said, myself and Denise said, let's kick this up and let's make a party in the beginning. You know, instead of everyone just coming and sitting in chairs and being talked to, you know, for five and a half hours or whatever, let's go and get people having a laugh. And, and the time that we, we do the first, you know, hour and a half, two hours, Everyone is so relaxed. Everyone in that whole room is connected with everyone else. Everybody will have interacted with someone and in a game. And then we go, so the, at the energy, and it, that's it. It's energy. It's all about the energy and the vibration and the energy lifts up in that, in that room. And the energy then just flows to everyone. And there is the experience. I'm getting goose pimples on my back when I'm saying I know, energy. so am I. And I'm so sorry I'm missing <laughs> your upcoming one. And like that thing about you, you, you mentioned a few times about flowing, like we're all energetic beings and energy wants to flow. And what yeah. is an emotion but a piece of energy? So when we talk about these energies like fear and anxiety, we're talking about a piece of energy that, that you know, we can, we can feel energetically in our emotional body, but we want to allow it to flow through us. And definitely dancing, movement, being positive, these are the ways really that we can really get the energy to move and to flow, which is what we want, which will bring us into that more vibrational, happy space. But it's, isn't it amazing, Dolores, that if one person if can change another person, so if, so if we get one person going to an event and that person changes, and then that person goes out and changes someone else, yes. imagine the consciousness of Ireland like I always say to people, why, why are you doing this? I says, I want Ireland to be a beacon of light in a world of madness. Love it. You can and see Ireland. You'll see Ireland from space at your events and it'll be lit <laughs> up. It'll be like, woo! Yeah. And, and you know, we're, we've done Dublin, Cork. Uh, I know Dublin. We're doing, next one is Galway. Uh, oh. Then we're doing Cork. And then we're doing Wexford. Um, and we're going to do Belfast and we're going to bring it into the uh, UK as well. We are Phenomenal. Aware, yeah. And all these are is just awareness. You know, I, I ask everybody, why do you go to these? And the feedback I get, I'm curious. I know I want to know more about life, the universe, spirit, whatever, you, whatever their, their journey. They want to connect with like-minded people because you know they're having conversations like this with, say, their partner. But they know if they said it to their friends, their friends would think they're wacky and go, "What, yeah. what are you talking about?" And this is the place where you know. And we're building a network. We've we've set up a Facebook group as well. And I'm trying to. I really. It might sound a bit weird, but I'm, I'm trying to see if we can if we can help people. Help them change. Help them see that it's not about looking out and worrying, looking in and feeling good. That's really what it is. You know? And that's phenomenal, you know, and it's like it's it's collaborating almost on a positive level rather than competing, which is something yeah. that I love to do, collaborate rather than compete, because I think the energy is just it comes from such a better place, no more than coming from the heart rather than the head. When we collaborate and, and we realize, you know, gosh, working together we we can create such such change rather than trying to compete is such a it's it there's there's friction there there's no flow which is what we want and we talked about earlier when we collaborate there's a flow of energy yeah and it it's like i as you know i'm i'm a, a, a culture consultant i'm a culture consultant to coaches and consultants so all the coaches and consultants out there people say are you, are you dealing with people who do the same as you i said yeah i am yeah. i'm helping them get up to the level that I'm at, and you know, I, I don't believe in competition. I, I, I believe it. I believe in just creating. 
creating. Um, I yeah. don't spend my energy. I don't look at what other people are doing because I'm really just being myself and my 28 years experience in business and I'm sharing that with people. Um, and then the Conscious Business Academy appeared uh, working on it and, and that's focusing around sales, marketing, culture and leadership. And from that, these events that we're doing, we want to then bring these events into organizations where we can see if we can bring in some consciousness into corporate world, because I believe that's where it's missing. Wow. That's a great goal to have, isn't it? And it's phenomenal. So I know there's one in Galway coming up. Do you want to let us know any more about it? Or have you any other dates that you want to let people know about? Because mm -hmm. I'll be sharing this with, uh, you know, if, if, on the global network so people can tune in from wherever they are. The, the, it's in Galway uh, on the 5th of October. Um, it's, we have a selection of speakers and the speakers are adding as well. So it's myself and Denise are hosting it. And then what we do is we'll, if you, if you really want to speak at one, we'll as well come to an event. So what we do is we pick some speak, some people from the audience and we pick then people from the area as well to give their flavor. And it's, you can find it, you can go on Eventbrite and it's change your mind, change your life. You can go on to my website, which is joedalton.ie forward slash change your mind, change your life. Just Google it. If you type in Joe Dalton, change your mind, change your life and you'll find it. And I'm not going to give too much away. Nope. Uh, the, 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 there is an early board, which is 75. Um, and I'm guaranteeing that people will have never experienced something like this before. Like we, we people who are at the Dublin event who are driving to Galway to do the Galway event, to, to take part of it because of the energy that they got from it. So I that's, that. yeah, that's, that's, that, that says it all, doesn't it? And yeah. the energy in Galway is wonderful anyway, but I'm a bit biased. Always a, Galway's a beautiful city. <laughs> you know, it, I was trying to like, where, where next, where next? And it was just, Galway was just popping up in my subconscious, Galway, Galway. And it is, it's a beautiful place. Um, you know, I remember spending many a time down, not a million miles from you in Westport, and then heading down to Galway as well. So yeah, it's, 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 it's a good place. So it's a, and the energy is right as well. Great. So I'm going to share those links with people as well, um, for sure. On, with, with this Irish Health Art Chat so that people can find out more about it and well, as much as you want to give away, which I think is good. Yeah, and, and, yeah, and just the, the last bit of message I want to give people is, is just be yourself. Don't worry about offending. You know, if your values are right and your values are centered and your values are good, as in loving, caring, spirituality, humor, you know, friends, family, you know, there's thousands of them out there. Pick, pick seven of them. And if they're, if you're focused on what they are and who you are, just be you, just be yourself and be genuine and be good to other people. And don't be frightened. Don't be frightened. You're okay. You're okay out there. Phenomenal. That, Cause that's what I was just going to ask you. Is there anything you wanted to finish on? And I think a lovely way to finish on is just be you and, have your values centered. I love those two pieces of advice. Joe, it was an absolute pleasure talking to you and I'm delighted to share all about your Conscious Business Academy and your Conscious, co uh, your Change Your Life, Change Your Mind, because I think, or Change Your Mind, Change Your Life, excuse me, <laughs> because they're going to be phenomenal. And I'm definitely going to get, get to one of them one of these days very, very soon. Yeah. And we have a radio show, a podcast called Breakthrough Brands, which we've got a lot of people coming on and, and talking. Vishen Bakalani, uh, Marissa Peer, we've had some names on that as well. And we'll have you as a guest, hopefully, if you if you take me up on an offer. I'd be delighted uh, to thank you. To, I think um, we could talk all day. <laughs> <laughs> we could indeed. Well, Dolores, thank you very much for Joe, inviting thank me. Thank you very much. A pleasure, uh, absolute pleasure to have you on. And I'm looking forward to sharing this uh, far and wide. Thank you. Thank See you, you. Joe.